and hello everyone welcome back to another NIM tutorial. In this tutorial we'll be talking about string utilities or STR utils. We're a little bit done with all of these data structures so now let's get into something a bit more interesting. So STR utils like I like to call it or string utilities is a module in NIM that allows us to work with strings more than we already can. So as an example, let's import it, import str utils. And this already right of the bat gives us a lot of things we can do, such as echo letters. And this will give us all of the letters in the alphabet, A all the way to Z, capital and lowercase, all in a set. We also get digits. And if we run this, we'll get zero to nine, also in a set var spaces. So this is a variable that's going to contain a lot of spaces. Hello world. I am Steve. As you can see, it contains a lot of spaces. When we echo it out, then we'll of course get hello world. I am Steve with a bunch of spaces here at the front and at the back, we just can't see it. We can of course make sure we do see it by just appending some random text. So as you can see, there's a bunch of spaces here at the end. Now we can change that by saying, and it will actually return a new value, it won't modify the original, spaces.strip. So this will strip our string, so it has no spaces at the beginning or the end. So it has no empty extra spaces. So as you can see here, instead of being a bunch of spaces, it just starts with the next amount of text. Same here at the front. So it removes spaces from the front and the back. With this power, we can also go dot .split. And this will split our text into a sequence via what we put in here. So let's do spaces and commas. And take note, this is in set, meaning you need to use characters. Now, if we run this, we'll get back a sequence where all of our words have been converted into items of the sequence. The reason I said comma here is because if we were to remove this comma, then you'll notice this here becomes one long string. So I just included comma. So basically at each and every interval of a string, we are going to create a new item in a sequence. And then finally, we can also check contains and let's say LL. So this is in hello. And we of course don't need to append anything. We run this and return true because this string does contain two letter L's right after each other. But if we say, okay, we're not going to receive this as a true because okay does not exist inside of the string. Now string utils also allows us to insert values into a string. So as an example, let's go here and echo $1 is my $2 and I'll explain this in a second. My fave color is $4. Now these dollars here are basically where we want to insert variables or values. To do that with string utils, we can just use a percentage symbol and then an array with our values we want to pass in. Let's say Jack is my friend. And then let's just put a random word here, moon, and then blue as my favorite color. So I'm going to explain this in a second, but if you run this, we'll get Jack is my friend and my favorite color is blue. So with these dollar symbols, we are specifying the first item in this array. And take note, we don't start at zero, we start at one here. So the first item in this array is going to become, it's going to go here. The second item is going to go here. The fourth item is going to go here. You're not limited to specify specifically only having one of each. Here I could do $2, $2. That will work. Or I could even go $3 and then here $2. So the order and stuff doesn't matter as long as you use numbers. However, it is only optional to use numbers. As an example, let's change blue to 200. And let's change this sentence to dollar hashtag. This time we're using hashtags instead of numbers. Is my 
dollar hashtag my fave color is dollar hashtag i have three dollar symbols a hashtag and i'm going to explain this in a second in my pocket if we were to run this we'll get my jack is my friend my favorite color is moon i have 200 dollars in my pocket so what is happening here is we don't specify any numbers so it will go from the start to the end so if you don't specify any numbers here it's just going to take the first one then the second one as they come that's what the hashtag means. So you don't need to specify a number if you don't want to. You don't need to specify an index. Otherwise, it will just go from the start all the way to the end as default. And in here, we needed to use three dollar symbols because this dollar symbol refers to this value here. This one right here. And you need to use a dollar symbol to escape dollar symbols. You might have remembered escape strings such as echo let's say i want double quotes here i have to escape the double quotes with a backslash the same concept applies here you have to escape these quote these dollar symbols with a dollar symbol the reason is we use a dollar symbol to specify when we should display one of these values so we need to use another dollar symbol to say escape it cool that's one way you can modify a string we can also go echo a brief and let's go PLO and we can specify an array with the values park plot and the plaza now what's happening here is it returns an index of an item in an array so in this case we'll get other one which is the index it has been found at negative one if it hasn't been found in this array or negative two if there is more than one item with the same pattern. And in this example, it will give us one. Why? Because here at index one is our answer. If we run this, we'll get one. Similarly, if we were to maybe move this one to the back here, we'll get two instead of one because now it's at index two. So it searches this array for anything that contains these letters. Let's say we also have plop. This means there are two values that contains PLO, as you can see with these highlighted sections. So if we run this, we'll get negative two because it can't give us an index because there are two values that fill this category. And then finally, let's say we make this Nick and we make this pizza. Then now it will return negative one because there's no value that contains PLO. Cool. Let's create a string A and it will contain hello. We can now say a.add world. And take note, this add method will permanently modify this variable. And we can then echo out a. If we run this, we'll get hello world. We also get add if for add format. This allows us to use that same method we talked about. So in this case, we can say hello world, my name is dollar, let's go dollar hashtag. And we just say Nick. Now, if we were to run this, it will say hello world, my name is Nick. Or we could specify dollar one, it will work the same, but this time we'll just specify an index. You can also align text such as, so here we have our hello. We can then say align A and we say 30. This will align the text to the right with 30 characters. This means that it's just going to add to this, but it won't add 30 spaces to the front. It will add the amount of characters here. So this is five characters. As you can see, there are five selected. So five characters, it's going to be 30 minus five. So we're going to get 25 spaces from this align. If you run this, You'll see here we get our 25 spaces. If we were to make this longer, such as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. If we did this and we run it, as you'll see, it starts at the same point here at the end and this amount of spaces gets less. So it's just going to align it 
with this amount of spaces or characters that you want it to have. So this line here, this piece of text should be at least 30 characters in length. And it will just add spaces to the front to match that length you want. You can also specify a line left and this will align to the left. So it's the same as what we just did, but this time you just specify you want it to align on the left. Meaning there's spaces here at the end here. So it's going to align itself here to the left and add spaces on the right. So if we were to just add a piece of text here and we were to run it, you'll see there's now a bunch of spaces here. And then finally, you can also align to the center. So it's saying center. And now if you run this, it will split it um, up evenly. So here we have our spaces, one, two, three, four, five, five spaces on each side. So it will try and center the text with the amount of spaces that we have left. And you can also specify a third value such as let's say dash. If you specify that third value, it's going to use dashes specifically to align it. Now here is something that I wish was in more languages built right out of the box. Capitalize ASCII. We can just say, I am very cool. Now what this is going to do is it's going to capitalize the very first letter in a string. I truly wish more languages did this because now with something so easy, we now have our first letter as a capital letter. Let's change our A variable back to what it used to be. Hello world. My name is Nick. There we go. Now here we can go a dot contains and it will see if it contains this piece of text such as name. If it does, it will return true. True. Simple as it will just check if this string contains this word. We can also specifically check if a starts with and let's say hello. This will return true because a does start with the word hello. Take note, it is case sensitive. So if you were to put a lowercase h there, you'll get false. And you can also check if it ends with, and here we could just say Nick. And it returned true if this piece of text ends with the word Nick. And that's that for this tutorial. Thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. And I will see you all again in the next NIM tutorial.